Welcome everyone. Welcome to Set Free Outreach Ministries. I'm Dr. Deborah Bales and beloved, we are continuing a dynamic series entitled Praying the Lord's Prayer for Spiritual Breakthrough. This is lesson number six. I'm so excited and I just welcome you all on. I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will minister and bless you as you watch and view or listen to this broadcast. Now, you should have your handouts. If by chance you do not, you can email us, morningmana2016 at gmail.com and just ask for uh, the prayer, praying the Lord's Prayer for Spiritual Breakthrough handout, and we will send you our outline, all right? So happy to do it. Father, we thank you today for your word. I thank you for your people, those that have joined us today for this broadcast. I pray, Father, that you would minister the word of the Lord, the refreshing that's needed, whatever is needed, a healing, a wholeness, Father God, just to be inspired to pray and really understand relationship with you and the power of breakthrough when we pray. When, we're, when our focus and attention is on you, Father, we thank you for that. And we ask you, God, to have your way. Minister to everyone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now listen, we're going into the word of the Lord now. Our theme scripture is Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. The portion of scripture we're going to uh, focus on today is, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hallelujah. Now listen, there are five essential facts about temptation that we want to discuss. We're talking about this today. And number one, God allows us, his children, to be tempted and tested. You may think, what? Yes, we're going to read the scripture. There will be times when temptation or tests will come our way, but God will not allow you to be tempted above that you're able to bear, okay? With every temptation, with every trial, with everything that comes, God will make a way of escape. Now let's read 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It says this, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way for you to escape that ye may be able to bear it, okay? So there's tests, there's trials again, there's situations that will come, but it's important for us to pray, Father, you see where I'm at, what's going on? Now, I, I need you to help me through this, walk me through this, okay? God will at times walk you through things. Then there are other things that come that God needs to lift off, but in everything, we must understand God will be with you. He must still be the focus. This is the purpose of this prayer, is for us to understand that God wants to be a vital point, a vital part of your life. And as you yield to him each and every day, getting to know him better, getting closer to him, things will take on a different view. Okay, when you find yourself in circumstances that you may not want to even be there, but this is the thing, God is directing the traffic. And if he's directing and you are submitted to him, the peace of God will rest in your spirit, will rest in your heart. Glory to God, knowing that when he speaks a word, he means exactly what he says. So he will walk you through right where you are. Now it's important, beloved, that you allow God to walk you through these things. Some things will come your way. It will to make you stronger. A lot of times we want to pick our test and we want to say, well, I, I'm not doing that. I don't have to do that. I don't have to go that way. I don't have to go to the left. But how do you know that God don't want you to go to the left? Are you going to direct your own traffic? Are you going to let God direct you? Job did not pick his, his situations. I think God was in control of that. but God brought him through that mm -hmm. and he will bring you through number two God's children can fall when you pray lead 
lead us not into temptation. You recognize that God's children, as his child, you can fall. So in praying, lead us not into, in, into um, okay, I'm sorry. So in praying, lead us not into temptation. You make a conscious decision to stay away from the lures of the world. 1 John 2, 15 and 16, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye and pride of life. These areas that can come to you and the enemy can test and tempt in a negative way. So you don't want to be on a, 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 a hill and you, for example, if you have a lust problem, you know that you want to be free from that and you're coming out of it. You don't want to get in a slippery slope that could put you in a, a way slick wise to get you to lusting and get you into an area that you don't need to be in. If you uh, uh, drink and God brought you out of that, you don't want to go back to where you're opening those doors to the flesh, to drink, to smoke, to do the weed, to do the things that whatever it is, watching too much television, into the soap operas, gossiping, backbiting, lying, cheating, stealing, okay? It doesn't matter what it is. You don't want to be on a slippery slope to slip on down into it again. You must be aggressive when it comes to your walk with God. It could be going back into depression, allowing the enemy to play with your mind, to talk to you. Why would you listen to the voice of the enemy? The enemy comes, he needs to be put down immediately. Many times, beloved, people listen to him and they, they give credence to it. And make, make what God wants, make it look less. Well, I don't know, you know, maybe I didn't hear right. And the enemy's voice is all magnified. He should not be. Okay, we got to understand that the Lord Jesus makes a way for us out. Jesus in Matthews 4, when he was tempted, okay, he stayed on God's side because the word was in him. And when the word is in us, the Holy Spirit will bring it up at the appointed time. And that is what we live by. We do not live by the world's way, the world's words, the devil's words, our words that are negative. We live by God's word. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Listen, you must change your attitude towards sin. Just as God hates sin, the more we sin, the effects of sin and how detrimental it is, we will grow to hate it more and more. When you understand the detrimental of it, the evil effects of it, and what God thinks about it, you fall out of agreement with it, and you fall into agreement with God. It'll take on a whole different meaning. Number three, God expects his children to overcome temptation. He expects us to do it. When you pray, lead us not into temptation, you're asking God to keep you from temptation. Jude chapter one, verse 24. Okay. This is why, beloved, again, God's word is imperative. It's imperative that we get these scriptures and that we go over them and we read them and we digest them and we allow the word to the Lord to take the word in us and we digest it again and we read it again. Glory to God. So Jude one twenty four says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Sila, and to present you faultless. What? You mean I can be presented faultless? Yes. Before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Now, when you understand it, First Peter, um, let me go there. 
the, the Christian virtues that we should have. Second Peter, you should read these. Second Peter 1, I'm not going to read them. I'm going to give you a homework assignment. Read these. You want to be able to stand. You want to be where you don't fall. You want to be where you don't slip. You want to be where the Dio Shando, yes, God. You want to be where you don't slide. Do these Christian virtues. Apply these to your life. This is food for you. This is one of these 911 emergency things that you need, beloved. Second Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 3, all the way down to verse number 11. Read those, study them, digest it. You will see that the Lord has made a way for you not to fall and to present you faultless to him. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen, God expects us not to sin. What? <laughs> he expects it. When you pray, lead us not into temptation, you're asking God to sanctify you, set you apart, make you different. Mm-hmm. This simply means to set your part so that you can be used by God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Let's go there. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. Glory to God. It says this, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, completely, without partiality without leaving anything out holy w w h o l l y holy complete okay and i pray god your whole spirit mm -hmm. and soul mind will and emotions and body that part that is supposed to house glory to god mm -hmm. be preserved blameless my god today glory to god mm -hmm. unto the coming of our lord jesus christ this is what god is doing for us this is how he wants to keep us thank you lord number four the lord's prayer can help you overcome temptation this is foundation we need these when you pray, lead us not into temptation, you establish a watchful attitude over your spiritual life. You're watching, you're remaining, you're being alert. You're alerted to the things that may be lurking around you and those that may be lurking and they may have something around them, in them that is not like God. And when you have those spiritual radars, antennas up, the Holy Spirit can warn you Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 26, 41. And I love this scripture because it talks about watching, but I'm going to read it. I could quote it. We're not going to quote it. We're going to read it. Matthew 26, 41. Go there. Hallelujah. It says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak. That's the body. Don't give in to the flesh and don't make credence and don't give yourself an out. Well, you know, the flesh is weak. Come on now. We all know that. But you don't have to give credence being that you know that. That's why you need to watch. You need to watch out so that whenever it tries to activate, my God, I thank you, Holy Ghost, you can deactivate it. Deactivate your flesh. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Deactivate it. Every time it tries, deactivate the flesh. Watch and pray. Stay on alert. Keep the flesh in its rightful place. Housing. It's made to house. Not made to live. Glory to God. When you understand, glory to God, that God's glory will shine through your life. When every part of you is in position where God wants it to be, to include the body. 
my God today. Okay, hallelujah. Listen, what you're doing in this, you're asking for deliverance, okay? There may be times when you have to flee situations, okay? And when the enemy attaches itself to that part of you, that flesh part of you, and you have to, you have to get healed and delivered, yeah, you go through the praying. You go through the process. He comes out of that flesh. He can't stay there. Oh, my shot up. Oh, satai. Got to go. Got to go. Got to go in the name of Jesus. Okay? There are times, again, you have to flee. Sometimes when things are not going the way they should in a conversation, for example, and you see misbehavior, guess what you do? You may have to walk away. You may have to turn that television off. You turn that radio off. You walk away from that conversation. You cut it off like a sharp knife to go yeek before they realize they've been cut. And you don't win another way. Glory to God. Glory to God. You must walk away, turn away, say no, and don't give in to an uprising of the enemy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You walk away to prevent from getting into trouble with your words or actions. Hallelujah. First Timothy 6, chapter 6, verse 11. First Timothy chapter 6. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Awesome, awesome word today. It says, verse 11, but thou, O man of God, Flee these things. Flee. Run. Get away. Flee. And follow after righteousness. Right living. Right standing. Doing things the right way. Godliness. Faith. Love. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Patience and meekness. Glory to God. Flee. It is okay to run. It is okay to say no. It is okay to slam the door on the devil. Thank you, Jesus. Number five, this is the last one. There's a life of victory. And this life of victory, God wants us to walk in it. When you pray, lead us not into temptation. You recognize this, beloved. God is your leader. You recognize who's leading and you acknowledge him as the leader, hallelujah, the director of your life. Thank you, Jesus. And that he will lead you to victory. Thank you, Jesus. It is the will of the Father that we have a victorious life. It is his will, beloved. It is God's perfect will. So Second Chronicles 20 and 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 20. This is what it says. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. Do you believe in God today? Are you believing and trusting and relying and having confidence in God, the God of your salvation today? He says, so shall ye be established. You will be established in him. Listen, believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Do you believe the word of the Lord? When the man or woman of God brings it to you, when a prophetic word comes your way, do you really believe? Do you really think, oh, thank you, God, you're speaking. Jehoshaphat encouraged the people. You must understand this. Your life is to be a life of victory. And God has already made a way for us to walk in complete and total victory every day of our lives. Thank you, Jesus. So when we ask God, to lead us not into temptation. We're asking him to guide our steps every day. Are you asking God to do that? Have you asked him today? Do you mean it? Will you follow? Will you be obedient to him? Are you spending time with God every day? 
it doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Vacation, not vacation. In school, out of school. Going to work five days a week and then off to. It doesn't matter. Your pattern, your relationship with God should not change based on where you are in your environment. And if it is, something is wrong. There's instability. If you're not taking time with God every day, every day of the world, something is wrong. And we must correct it immediately. Okay. Keep in mind, beloved, that your focus is on God. And so when you get to this part of the prayer, he will teach you how to depend on him. And that's where our dependence must be. Our hope and our trust must be in God. Okay? It must be based on his word because that's what God listens for. Everything we do. Okay? You understand your walk with God is a walk of faith and trust, reliance and belief in him and his word. Okay? So in walking through, uh, even in Walking through temptation, testing, and trial, the word of God must take precedent. Walking through a traumatic situation, walking through something that the Lord will sometime tell you, you're going to go through something, but you're going to be all right. That means you have to get a hold of God and let him walk you through it. The Lord told me that just recently. Praise the Lord. So guess what? My hope is in him. My help is in him. Come on. Is your hope in God today? Is your strength in God? Are you encouraged by the Lord? Oh, we can pray this. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Father, help me today. That's what you're saying. Your attention is on God. So even in going through healing and deliverance, Father, you brought this up today. I thank you for it. Now you bring deliverance and healing as only you can. Father, I thank you for everyone today. I thank you for those that are viewing this broadcast right now. I ask you, Lord, minister to them this revelation word, illuminating word, life-changing word, to give, give us to know that we are victorious in you. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. Minister right now. Father, we thank you for encouraging. We thank you, Lord God, for lifting up that one that may be low today, hallelujah, that may be discouraged, encourage. And Lord, we thank you. I thank you for this, that you will lead us not into temptation, but you will deliver us from all evil, everything that's not like God. Reveal it, make it known, pull down and expose every wicked vice of the enemy in the name of Jesus, every wicked trap, my God, we ask you to abort in the name of the Lord. And Father, we thank you for that that you're doing for us, your people. I thank you for ministering into the lives of everyone right now. Save, deliver, set free by the power of God. Heal, Father. And Lord, we thank you for victory today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, beloved, so, so excited. We're going to finish this on our next broadcast. And it's simply going to be, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We began by honoring God, praising him. We're going to end on that same high. Honoring him, glorifying him magnifying him. We're going to see the importance of keeping God in our prayer and making him the focus. I pray that the word of the Lord has been a blessing and will continue to be a blessing to you. I pray that you'll continue to allow the Lord to minister into your life. Now we'll be back for our next broadcast and we will bring the conclusion of this powerful series, Praying the Lord's Prayer for spiritual breakthrough. I pray that you will join us. God bless.